Hey, this is Gregory with the Cinema Rag. I hope you're doing well today. Today we're going to talk about Tarantino balking out of his 10th and final project to possibly do a movie on Brad Pitt's character from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. But he balked on that now. So for if you can, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so these episodes come fresh to you. And please post a comment. Tarantino, we have a couple of videos here on Tarantino. We have a Tarantino versus David Fincher that we that we did, May and I, my erstwhile co-host. And I've been on the record. Tarantino to me is a, an, a director who I really liked when I was younger. So when Reservoir Dogs came out, Pulp Fiction, his early works came out, I was in that perfect age. I was college, young college. And so Tarantino was like, oh my God, this guy is revelatory. But I notice the older I get, it feels like I get older and our ages are almost commensurate. He's a little older than I am. I get older, he kind of stays the same, like Wooderman's char character, McConaughey's character from Days and Confused. I keep getting older, but the girls keep saying the same age. And I just feel like Tarantino's stunted. Like if you look at, he's like still a teenage boy. He's over fascinated with boobs and gratuitous violence. And his movies, of course, are known as gratuitous violence. One of the reasons I liked Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, probably the most out of all of his movies, is because there was, I mean, the gratuitous violence, like the blowtorch and all these things, was at the very end, and it wasn't as bad and, and gratuitous as some of his other movies. But I just feel like, and, and if you hear him interviewed too, he just seems like he's still, he's a stunted 20-year-old. He just, but that's my take. We had an episode here where I ranked, in my personal opinion, Fincher, Michael Mann, Tarantino, and Christopher Nolan. And newsflash, uh, <laughs> Tarantino's gonna be lower, but that's just me. Look, if you like Tarantino, that's great. Some of his movies I really like, like Inglorious Bastards I like, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood I like. Uh, but I, as I get older, I just find his movies to be pretty juvenile. Now, he has done nine films if you count Kill Bill as one volume, and he has said for a long time that he's only gonna do 10 films and then he's gonna retire because he doesn't want to be like, you know, uh, maybe Francis Ford Coppola will do a video on them possibly in the future about Megalopolis, how big studio uh, execs finally got to view it and they were like, oh, this is not gonna get major distribution. This movie is not marketable. So I think he realizes that for every Scorsese or Ridley Scott who are in their 80s and doing decent work, I wouldn't say their best work, he doesn't want to go down that road. Now, of course, he could be like the Eagles and say he's going to retire and then come back and then you know retire and come back and who knows. But he's saying the 10th was his last one. So for a long time, he was going to do a movie called The Critic, which was about, you know, a, not ostensibly, but kind of a criticism of Pauline Kael, who was a very well-known movie critic of the 70s and 80s. Pretty scathing. She was known to have pretty scathing reviews. And so it was going to be like loosely, a loose adaptation of Pauline Kael. But he was actually gonna start filming this now. And if he had done one day of filming in 2024, he would qualify for a $20 million tax credit, but he was gonna do the filming in earnest in 2025. Well, he, he, he scrapped the idea of doing the critic. So now he's thinking about doing uh, Cliff Booth, Tom, uh, Brad Pitt's character from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the one that Brad Pitt got an Academy Award. Now I've mentioned there before, if you've listened to all my podcast episodes and videos, that. DiCaprio is doing the much harder role in that movie than Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt's essentially playing cool Brad Pitt. Leo's got to do a lot of range of gamut of emotions in that movie. And Leo, I think, should have gotten the Academy Award instead of Pitt. Either way, Pitt finally got his Academy Award for acting. So it's not clear whether or not you want to do a prequel or a sequel to Booth's character. So at the end of that movie, of course, you know, he, he, he kills or the dog kills a couple of the Manson. Uh, followers so it's unclear like a prequel would be difficult because Pitt's older so they it would have to be like a prequel that's set like maybe in the mid to late 60s because that movie takes place in 69 so maybe you could do an immediate prequel but if you're having Brad Pitt play C Cliff Booth and it's not going to be like what Michael Mann's doing with Heat 2 which is going to kind of be a prequel they already have Adam Driver lined up for that then it's got to be a prequel a couple years before or they could do a sequel uh, of events that take place afterwards, maybe a few years forward in the mid 70s. To Leo is not slated to be in this sequel uh, at all. So this is what Tarantino was ruminating over. He's like, I wanna do a, a sequel with Cliff Booth as his 10th film. But then recently he just quoted in the source and said, yeah, he scrapped it. And look, this is not the first time that Tarantino has 
thought about doing a movie and then scrapped it. He was in line to do Star Trek before J.J. Abrams rebooted the one with Chris Pine and uh, Zoe Zaldana. He was slated to do that one. So it's not like it's the first time he has said he's going to do a movie, even started writing the movie and then scrapped it. And I think with Tarantino, some of it I think he's older, and some of it I think he, if he's really true to his conviction, this is his 10th film, he wants the 10th film to be a good idea and to be right. And some critics of Tarantino will say, like, he's never done anything original. He just repackages art house movies like Kill Bill and Pulp Fiction and Hateful Eight. You know, that's just a repackaged Western. It's like he doesn't come up with anything original. He just kind of puts new spins on kind of pulpy movie genres from the 60s and 70s. I'm not necessarily going to say that, but I could see him wanting to do something that's going to be like, this is my 10th, this is my final movie, drop the mic. And I would not want him to do a Cliff Booth sequel because he's already done that genre. Like if you look at all of his movies, they all kind of hit a certain type. And I would love him to do just something completely different and do a genre he hasn't done. Maybe horror, I don't know, rom-com. How about like do a P.T. Anderson movie? Let's see if you got a P.T. Anderson Phantom Thread in you or a Magnolia in you. Something that's like hard, hardcore drama that doesn't have like the, the cutesy dialogue, the gratuitous violence and all the nonsense that he is known for. That's what I would like for him to see. Because say what you want about Paul Thomas Anderson. You look at something like Boogie Nights, which has got a lot of comedy. It's just vastly different than Phantom Thread, for example, or There Will Be Blood. So I like Tarantino to show that he's truly a director that has a lot of range and make his final movie like a legit high-end drama that doesn't have all the tokens that his movies normally have. By the way, post in the comments, what's your take? What would you like your Tarantino movie to be your last one? And if you agree with me about Tarantino, you don't, post in the comments. Until next time, take care. God bless and pray.